Today, I'll be discussing the Comet GP9. I'll go through the assembly of the antenna itself and do a test on the antenna. Stick around. For the last year or so, I have been using the Comet GP3 as my antenna of choice for my 2 meter and 70 centimeter uh, frequencies. Now the GP3 has been a fantastic antenna and still is and it still works great but I can't seem to reach those outlining uh, repeaters that I want to get to and one repeater in particular is 50 miles away from my QTH here. I can receive off the repeater but I just can't reach out and connect to it from my location. So I went ahead and decided to step up my game a little bit and I purchased the Comet GP9. Now the Comet GP9 antenna has got some excellent uh, reviews on eHam. Go look them up if you'd like to. Uh, and after doing a little research I figured I will go ahead and give this antenna a shot. And just, just uh, it's not really a budget cruncher. It's only just a little over $200. And for that amount of money I figured it was well worth the risk. Now in comparison the GP3 antenna and the GP9 both have the same frequency ranges on 2 meter and 77 meter. Uh, the GP3 stands in at 5 foot 11 inches in length whereas the GP9 comes in at 16 foot 9 inches and there's considerable distance. And with that length increase also provides, it also provides a higher gain. I'm hoping this higher gain will let me uh, reach out and connect to those distant repeaters. So let's go ahead and do an unboxing and I'm also going to do an assembly of this antenna. Uh, I am not going to do a mast installation as I have already covered that in uh, my video on the GP3. So let's go ahead and unbox this uh, antenna that I've purchased from uh, DX Engineering. And as a side note, I'm not getting any type of reimbursement from DX Engineering at all. Uh, they just happen to be the uh, vendor of choice for this particular purchase. They're a great company to deal with, so I do highly recommend them. There are other companies out there. Uh, I did check a few, and most of them were saying they were out of stock. And DX Engineering had the same price and quick shipping. So I'm not being reimbursed or any way compensated by them. Uh, for mentioning their name. just want to make sure that's clear. So let's go ahead and do the unboxing, the assembly, and then we'll do a test on the uh, GP9. Okay, my antenna just came in from uh, DX Engineering. So let's go ahead and open up this thing and see exactly what we have inside here. here. And I'm going to move their box out of the way here. Move the packing slip out of the way. Just the uh, hats packing slip. Packing material and packing slip out of the way. And here you have it. It comes like all the other GP or all the uh, Comet antennas in a green container. Obviously you can see here it says GP9 up here. Alright, so let's go ahead and open this up and I'll put it out on the floor here to show you what's inside this packaging. Alright ladies and gentlemen here it is the Comet GP9. We have the base unit or the bottom unit that is. Midsection, top section. We have a radials right here. We have the two U-bolts and the mounting bracket. So let's go ahead and assemble this guy and then uh, we will put it up on the mast. To complete this in, uh, installation uh, assembly I had to move the operation outdoors otherwise uh, I wouldn't have been able to get the antenna out of the house and that would have been a whole other video. So we're outside now and what we have to do now is the instructions want us to go ahead and assemble 
the top half of the antenna to the middle half of the antenna and then attach the, the middle section of the antenna to the lower section. But before we do this, I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned uh, through experience here. And hopefully uh, what I'm about to show you will save some people and will save you all some headache if you decide to purchase one of these antennas. And like I said, this will probably save you some headache in the assembly process. Okay, what I'm going to show you here is this is the center section of the pipe right here, the antenna itself here. We have the brass connector here. Now I went ahead and I went ahead and pre-screwed the small screws in here just a little bit just to make uh, the assembly a little more, uh, a little easier. Now what, what we have here is this assembly is sticking out here. Now, this base antenna has the same type of assembly here on, on this end down here. I don't know if you can see it from there, but there it is. And it needs to attach to a wire, which is actually coming out of the center section here. Upper section has the same type of wire that's uh, coming out of the bottom of it. But what we need to do is, when we attach the upper assembly here, here's the wire for the upper assembly here. This is what I'm looking at. It's got a loop on it. Um, when we attach this wire to the center section here, the center pole, the center mast right here, on this little brass assembly, what happens is, um, when you pull this out to do so, the wire, which is, is this type of wire here, that's on the base assembly down here, will have to go into this brass assembly right here. Now, the problem is, if you pull, this is what I've learned, if you tap, you can tap these down just gently on to the hard surface, gently, like I said, and inertia and gravity will pull that section down so you can go ahead and grab it. But once you pull this out from this end to attach the top assembly, and you get the top assembly assembled, you cannot reach the wire in the bottom part. So, here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and tap this down gently just to get this bottom wire out. Once I get it out, I'll come back to the video. Okay, I've tapped the pipe, or the antenna mast, just gently enough for this piece of the connection to come out here, which is going to go into the bottom part of the uh, uh, mast assembly itself. But, like I said, when you do the top part, and this part, this wire right here, you can't have trouble getting a uh, hold up to attach to this part. So what I've done is I took a, some string, and I've tied it just around here, and I tied a knot on it here, so there's no chance of it pulling off and unraveling while you're doing the top part of the antenna. Now what this will do, this will give you, when you tap the bottom part now, to get the top part of the assembly of the uh, middle base out, uh, the little brass fitting, this you'll be able to, when you're ready to do the lower part, pull the string and pull this lower part off here and you just cut the string off. So let's go ahead and, like I said, we're going to tap on a hard surface until the brass fitting comes out of the other side. In the meantime, you can, I'd recommend if you can, just stick your finger on here, just to hold on to it. You're probably not going to lose it, but that just gives you a little extra security. And if you do lose it, you just have to do the whole thing again. So like I said, just gently tap until you can get hold of the brass fitting. Okay, as you can see now, I've got the brass fitting here that I will attach to the top assembly, the wire protruding from the top assembly here. So let's go ahead and do that and complete the uh, assembly of the top and middle section here. Now, like I said, I went ahead and put these screws in ahead of time just to make assembly a little bit easier. Uh, you don't want to really drop these screws either because yeah, they would be like anything else a bear to find. take these out all the way here for it to fit so wish me luck that I don't drop any of these things because if I do you're bound to hear some foul language here there we go now I didn't have to 
All right, you'll know when the wire fits completely and it'll hit the base of the uh, the coupler here, the brass coupler here. Take a screwdriver and just screw down two screws until they snug. Uh, my hand's kind of blocked it, I'm sorry. But you just screw these on here, these two screws, until they're snug right here. Then, basically, you just push that little foam back up inside the pipe. And you put the two pipes together. Now, you don't want to tighten it too much. This is a rubber rubber gasket right here. Now, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Okay, this right here is the rubber gasket. And you don't want to uh, over tighten this thing. Now, you really can't over tighten it, but that is what gives it the water tightness. And plus, there's also a seal on the top here, which you can't see, it's part of the plastic itself. So, you just push the two together, and you'll feel, you'll hear it and feel it when it connects. Take the bottom, take the bottom part here, after it's connected, simply just screw it on tight, hand tight. Get a wrench. Okay, now that completes the top and lower part assembly. Or top and middle part that is assembly. Excuse me. Now, let's go ahead and, as you can see, you can see the wire has been pulled way back in the back, so you had trouble getting it. With this wire, you can just take this because you need to pull it out enough to fit into. If I can get this here, to the uh, bottom assembly here, the the brass fitting in the bottom assembly here. So just gently pull it out, and problem solved. Now, of course, you'll need to cut that string because you don't want to leave that string in there. I don't think it hurt anything, to be honest with you, but I prefer not to leave it in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. And, you know, actually, I don't think that would hurt it, but let's not risk fate here took the string off okay now what we need to do is to go ahead and get this assembled here we're going to do the same procedure I'm going to loosen these screws up some or most of the way and we're going to insert this wire into the bottom assembly same fashion. Whoops, I just dropped a screw here. Thank God it didn't fall on the ground. And again, just tighten the screws down firmly. You don't have to torque them on, just firmly. Once that's done, go ahead and attach the top part of the mast to the lower section of the mast. need to do also to push this assembly up more. Push this, push this top assembly. I forgot to do that. Top assembly, push it up into it further. Here you go. Now reattach. You've now completed the whole assembly. Very simple of the GP9, comma GP9 
72 meter 77 meter uh, mast itself so let's go ahead and do the final steps here to get this installation complete okay and we're coming up on the final stages of the uh, actual antenna assembly itself but we have to attach the radials to the antenna itself but we use the three nuts that are provided attach these nuts onto the radials themselves and you screw them all the way up to where they can't screw up any further on the on the radial itself then you go ahead and attach the radial I'm just going to show you this one until it fits in there firmly using a wrench or a player pliers wherever is easiest for you go ahead and tighten this nut up as tight as you can get it without actually stripping anything and the trick is is to get a hold of that nut there you go. and just tighten it securely you don't want to strip anything okay and just go ahead and repeat the process for the second and the third radial okay so let's go ahead and take the mass brackets they just simply slide up over the pole one goes about here and I need to get another wrench because I only brought one wrench out to tighten this down with but one of them goes here and the other one goes here uh, it takes two wrenches one to hold the bottom one to screw the top on like I said I've only got one bracket out, or one wrench out here so I'll do that in just a minute but basically that completes the installation of the antenna itself uh, once I get this replaced onto the mast itself, I will go ahead and show you what this looks like uh, and, uh, and then we'll do a radio check to see if I can repeat if I can reach one of those outlining repeaters that I can't get to. So let me go ahead and finish doing this. Let me get it up on the mast and I'll come back with you in just a little bit later. Okay, I've mounted the uh, GP9 onto the antenna mast. It's the top of the mast is about uh, 30, about 33 feet up. So antenna itself is about eight, you know, six to 18 feet high. So it's up into the around 40 feet total from the tip of the mast to the base. Uh, it wasn't that hard to install. You do have to remember that it is, even though it's only less than six pounds, you do have to maneuver it onto the mast itself. So, once again, the installed version of the Comet GP9. Uh, the antenna itself, you see, is not, itself is not grounded, or not, I'm sorry, not grounded, but not guide. Um, I've checked with a few people, they said, nah, you don't need to really guide. If it was... Um, 20 feet or longer in length they probably would recommend it but under 20 feet guying on the antenna itself is not necessary however yeah, it's just my it's the base of it right there where it's mounted to the mast got strain relief that loop right there is not a choke it's basically a strain re relief and I have the LMR 400 guide at various locations, uh, not guide, but taped down on various locations 
on the antenna itself just to stabilize the wire to keep it from flopping around. All right. That's it. Let's go ahead and check out how this antenna works. Now this is a Crest for you, uh, UHF repeater, which is 49 miles away from my uh, shack here. I've not been able to actually hit this repeater. I can receive it, but I never have been able to actually hit the repeater. So let's see if uh, I can actually hit the repeater now with this uh, GP9 Common GP9 antenna. Kilo 4, Sierra Romeo Foxtrot requesting a uh, signal check. Yeah, roger that. Uh, yeah, actually, I am actually in Scambia County. I uh, usually use the uh, Milton repeater, and I am now trying uh, the Crestview repeater. I've installed a new Comet GP9 uh, antenna, and previously I was never able to make the Crestview re repeater, so I wanted to see if I could even contact the Crestview repeater from my location. It's about a 49 to 50, mi 50 miles away from my location. Uh, a little scratchy, I can understand, but at least I'm hitting the repeater now. Over. Yes, sir. Just sounds like a little bit of whip flutter. That transmission uh, seems like it was a little bit better. I don't know if you made any changes or whatever. It sounds like you're mobile, but uh, there is some uh, ticket fencing or whip flutter or whatever you may want to call it. But uh, signal audio sounds great. It's nice and uh, very understandable and loud. But not too loud. Yeah, Roger, Roger. I appreciate it. Okay, well, appreciate you come back, and I'm um, gonna go ahead and uh, clean up a little mess here. Thank you again for your time. This is Stephen. It's Canby County. It's K4SRF. I'll be clear. Okay. Okay, all right. As you can see, I've actually hit the Crestview repeater, and I was not. Sorry about that. I was able to hit the um, Crestview repeater from uh, Pensacola, and I've not been able to do that before with my base station previous antenna, the GP3, the GP9. Obviously, has better gain, and this antenna, this repeater is like 49, 50 miles away, so. It is, you know, it's pushing the limit. It's still pushing the limit, but I'm actually making it now, where previously I was not. Well, that's the test. I was able to reach out to that Crestview repeater, which is about 50 miles away from my QTH. The signal may not have been perfect, but it was reachable, and I was quite readable to uh, the gentleman on the other end. And that's what's important. The GP3, though a fantastic antenna, does have a limited range of, in my case, I was reaching out about, oh, maybe 20 miles. The GP9 has actually given me an extra 30 miles. Now understand that you may get this extra range, you may be able to connect to these outlining repeaters, your signal is going to degrade, and that's just natural. But I think the GP9 is well worth the investment, and like I said, at the time of this uh, recording, just a little over $200. It's not really a big uh, budget cruncher. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope I've provided you some, with some useful information. And if you haven't already, subscribe and click that bell to be notified of upcoming videos. Until then, see you on the airwaves.